the Glossop case is a really good example of not having checks and balances in the system. And if this man gets executed on that record, what kind of Oklahoma do we wake up in the next morning? And that's a real hard question to answer. So I am so proud that 62 legislators have signed a, a petition. I, I hope more do. And I, I hope we come up with some kind of legislation that when it is this obvious and when the top cop in the state says, we blew this, that it can, it can be stopped. It doesn't matter whether you're pro-capital punishment or anti-capital punishment. Nobody thinks you should execute the wrong person. I just wanted to say thank you so much for using your platform to raise awareness around this issue. I was curious, is the Richard Glossop case the first time that you used your platform to raise awareness around the wrongdoings of some cases of capital punishment? And after this, do you continue uh, championing this cause? Uh, no, I've done it in several cases. One of them is Rodney Reed in Texas, and uh, we've just gotten good news on that case. Uh, there's another one in New Orleans that we've just gotten good news on after it being stalemated for a long, long time. The first one that we worked on really hard was a gentleman named Marty Tankliff, who gave a confession, supposedly. He was a young man, 17, 18, and he confessed to bludgeoning both of his parents to death. Now this was after being browbeat in interrogation. He ultimately signed something that he didn't write and he was put in for life. We fought that, fought that, fought that. And in 2007, got him exonerated. And Marty Tankliff is now a lawyer at Georgetown University doing work in this area. So yeah, I'm involved in probably eight or nine of them now and have been for years. Yes, ma'am. Thank you first to Webster McDougall. Uh, I remember years ago when he, we took a trip actually to prison to visit Richard Glossop. And for years, many have thought that uh, he should not be executed and has not done what folks say he's done. I appreciate the fact that Richard Glossop is someone because he is innocent, because the case was flawed, that we can all come together and say, let's stand up for Richard Glossop. I wanna hear what you all are thinking and how did he get justice for Richard Gloss of the most direct path? Basically, they said, send it back to the VA. Well, it's a new VA. She has said, there's not enough evidence yet. She would have to, to completely reinvestigate this thing in order to file charges. And so it would go back to her if they honored what Gethard Drummond requested. Or Gethard Drummond might keep the case for himself instead of handing it off to her uh, and have one of his folks do it. So either way, it's in a lot better place than what we're been. Yes, sir. What got you involved with this? What, what came about that brought you in it? And how long have you been working on this case? Well, I did a year's postdoctoral training in forensic psychology and got really interested in psychology and the law and particularly in deception detection and false confessions and a lot of the things that go into these cases. and. There's a disproportionate number of people convicted of these crimes that are low socioeconomic status or minorities. Just because you don't have the money for high-priced lawyers and experts doesn't mean you spend the rest of your life in prison if you're innocent. And if you're not, then put them under the jail. But I think they should have a fair trial in court. And I'm just very passionate about that. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.